Hello everyone, and welcome back to my complete career mode run through in Kerbal Space Program 0.23, where I've decided to take Bob Kerman into a lathe aerobrake after all, because, well, because first of all, we've already done the high over joule test uh, and EVA, so I don't know how close to joule we need to get in order to get the low, uh, the near to joule test. So that's the first thing. Uh, I might not even be able to get that test, in which case air breaking at Joule would be a waste. Uh, second of all, I, I calculated how much delta V it takes to transfer from the different moons of Joule at their uh, home and transfer points. And it is pretty manageable. I think I could get to, if if we could uh, do it right, if the, if the moons are in alignment, um, we could probably transfer to two or three of the moons of Joule instead of just one if we get into uh, Lathe orbit. So uh, it, the plan is to get into Lathe orbit by air breaking there, then get to the right fa phase angle to transfer to Val, which is the next uh, moon out, I believe. And uh, if it isn't, then it's Tylo. I, I get the order of them mixed up sometimes, but either Val or Tylo, and then. Uh, going to Valortilo, then if we can, use Valortilo to slingshot to the next one. I don't want to try and get into orbit around uh, moon number two, because that would take a lot of fuel and would be inefficient, but if we can slingshot around and get to the next one, that would be ideal. Even if uh, slingshotting means that I don't do a home and transfer. So... And then there are other ways, uh, we'll take a look at it and see how we might be able to transfer to some of the other moons. But first I, I've decided to do the lathe arrow breaks, so what I need to do is bring us closer into lathe. Because it'll be inefficient to do it uh, once we get in tighter to the dual system. And now it's, it's the maneuver node thing. So somebody suggested that I should change focus. So let me actually change focus to jewel and see if it helps me make no <laughs> uh, not quite uh, it still wants to stutter away from me and it doesn't want to slide in the direction I want it to okay well it was a valiant effort so let me just get the maneuver node that I can let's say here and I'll burn in the same direction it should give me the right results so the thing to get is the Leif periapsis into its atmosphere, which is definitely less than... Okay, it's not really showing me much. Ah, oh, there we go. Actually, having the focus on Joule helps. I could take a good look at this. All right, so we're coming in high, and that makes us higher, so like that. Yep. Okay, and then uh, we can do the radio one too. Uh oh, huh? That's interesting. But uh, <laughs> so, just uh, least gravity could put us into orbit around Joule. That's very interesting. But uh, that's we don't actually want to get into orbit around Joule. We want to get into orbit around Val in order to time our transfer to. Uh, we want to get into orbit around Lathe in order to time our transfer to Val. I think uh, 100 is a good standoff distance. I mean, uh, it wouldn't take too much to dip into Lathe's atmosphere like that. Though I guess we could get in closer. Ooh, that's a bit too close uh, since I haven't calculated... Well, I've calculated uh, using scale height that the... Uh, that the... Um, we'll say the ballpark figure for the air breaking distances in the low 20 kilometer range I mean I could go 30 on it but okay I, I'll uh, since these are really fine adjustments I'll do it during the burn okay uh, that whatever it is should be good enough 50 ish Okay, so that's our approach to the dual system now, assuming a lathe air break. Now, let me attempt to bring us in without... Oh, we're really far out. Anyway, 
but which is good because that means we got a lot of bang for our buck from our Delta V so let's try and come in we're like 14 days out but I absolutely must not pass you know everything okay here it comes I'll have to pause well I'll have to pause recording as we go across this in order to make sure Fraps doesn't uh, crash as usual. Okay, we're on the other side, and now here's the trick. The oh, let's focus on Lathe. It's only 15 minutes away, so we need to do some quick work here. I'm going to jot some numbers down and then bring it over to the air brake calculator. So we've got a height of let's say 2,500. I'm just gonna do ballpark 2,500 kilometers and 3,180 meters per second and a periapsis of 56.9 let's say 57 kilometers alright so I'm gonna bring that to the air braking calculator and see what I get I'll be back with you in a sec okay so the air braking calculator gives me 2, 000, uh, 21,651 and that's assuming a drag coefficient of 0.2 which I don't know if my drag coefficient is 0.2 uh, but and that's one of the reasons why I was a little bit nervous about using the air braking calculator because well might not be perfectly accurate here and uh, desired apoapsis of 1000 kilometers which is the default there and I, I stuck with the default there because well because uh, 1000 kilometers sounds like a good safe distance away from uh, Leif to ensure that I can uh, boost my periapsis back out of the atmosphere. Remember, I have to do that part as well. If I uh, brought it in too tight, it'd take a much uh, more substantial burn in order to boost my periapsis. And actually, I'll still shade it a little bit high. Let's say high by about 200 meters. It should be fine. We're not coming in quite equatorially. That could cause a problem transferring to the other moons but well how much would it take so we've got 41.7 let's say I wanted to correct this oh wow lots um, let's just do a little bit of it okay our budget for a hundred meters per second is fine and let's we need to do the burn right now, so... Here we are around Laith. Not the first time I've ever tried to visit Laith, uh, but hopefully the first time it's successful. Speaking of which, let me retract the solar panels, since we're going into the atmosphere and they'll snap off. And while we're high over Laith, I think we have some business to attend to. Okay, Goo feels right at home, 90 science. And once I finish the burn, I'll have Bob EVA. Once we're closer in, I'll try one of the science lab things. Okay, well that should be good enough. Alright, uh, standard configuration, tail in. Turn a little bit. Uh, actually, let's orient plant-wise, like so. Okay, Bob, EVA time. Okay, 72 science for Bob's ob observations. Let's keep that. And let's approach Lathe. Okay, um, science experiment. Near, okay, we're near Lathe and 225 science for that. Let's keep that. Let's try and get a temperature reading. Uh, no, that's the materials bay. Temperature reading. Yeah, good. Got that. 
Now, the tricky one, the barometer. Do we get barometer readings? No. We, we're actually in the atmosphere here, yes. Let's try this again. Oh, it's not letting me try it again. Okay, let me try the other one. <sighs> okay, well, uh, there's got to be some pressure because we're <laughs> we're slowing down a lot. Uh, maybe inside Lathe's atmosphere? No, it's still in, in space near Lathe. Uh, I don't think that's right at all. We are not in spa space near Lathe. We are in Lathe's atmosphere. That needs to be fixed. How about now? Nope. Apparently, they don't know about Lave's atmosphere. Okay. Approaching periapsis in 3, 2, 1. Alright, still not in orbit, but that can be fixed if I need to. And it looks like we're gonna get in orbit. We're certainly captured by Jewel. And... Come on. Yeah, captured by Lathe. Slightly inclined orbit. We are now no longer in a stressful situation. I think we're too close. We're still in the atmosphere, so I don't want to EVA Bob out, but there's a fine line between where the atmosphere ends and where we're no longer in space near Lave. So, I need to figure out. I wonder which moon that is. Looks like Tylo, I think. Okay, uh, well... Our apoapsis will be about a thousand kilometers. So I'll have to take a look at uh, transferring to Val next. But uh, let's finish our business here. At least uh, boost our orbit back out of the atmosphere and then. But also uh, EVA Bob. Once that little marker hits the top there, I think it'll be alright. Actually, uh, once we are able to time warp, right? Then we are no longer under acceleration. Okay. Alright. Near lathe, good. Got that one. Could use another goo container, but uh, I do intend to swing by some of the other moons, so I'll hold off on that. Really irritating that we, uh, well, we got data on that one, but uh, couldn't get a barometer reading near Lathe. This is uh, probably uh, the same as this one. Yeah, keep that one. Okay, right. So let's do this properly. I'm gonna go to Apoapsis. Fix our orbit a bit. Ah, uh, while I'm at it, I should. Uh... Come on. All right, I should extend our solar panels again. Looks like 60 kilometers would be safe. Probably should give it 65 just in case. Can we see Lathe from afar? Oh, well, there's Jewel and there's Lathe. Actually, let's get the family picture here. Okay.
Okay, that's fine by me. Now, could have been better. Uh, well, actually, uh, if, if we were to transfer directly to Val, this wouldn't be bad because uh, the periapsis is so close to the intended direction of the orbit. But uh, Val is probably not in the right position just yet. Um, yeah, our NASA would have figured out where exactly Val would be, when, uh, where exactly Leif would be when Val would be in the right place for Holman transfer. And uh, this orbit that we made here, they would have made sure was in the correct orientation to optimize that and everything. But uh, let me pause and look up the phase angle between Leif and Val. And that phase angle is 47.56. Just for you to know, I actually uh, created a little program for myself. There's a programming language called R that's really simple for this sort of thing. And uh, what it does is I, I've i written a little thing where I just handed a spreadsheet with all the orbital data of anything I want, really, as long as the top line is the central body, in this case, Joule. And it will give me the phase angles and the Holman transfer times, and launch windows, and uh, and the delta v necessary. So, I have been unusually intelligent in that, in doing so. So, so 47.56. Gonna set Val as target. That means Val has to be ahead of us by 47.56. So like that angle, like that, similar to what we get with Duna. So yeah, I actually uh, fed that little spreadsheet. Uh, uh, that little uh, program. Oh, this is this is not good. I don't want to uh, slow down on time warp every time. Well, I guess it's not too bad. Um, yeah, I'll allow it because I want to get. No, I might not even be in the right place for uh, using this periapsis as a boost. Yeah, let me boost out of uh, out of the time constraints at least. So yeah, uh, I can feed it any solar system. I fed it uh, our own solar system with some asteroids thrown in just for fun. And it managed to figure out that stuff. And uh, there is a catch. The catch is that it always assumes circular orbits and uh, non-inclined orbits. And uh, it turns out that that means that the estimate estimated times for, for instance, an Earth-Mars transfer that it gives are a little bit off. Uh, so, not perfect, but okay. So, boosting out of the restricted zone, hopefully. If I knew that this periapsis would be the right place to boost out from, I wouldn't do this, but I just sit and wait. But I don't think it is. Uh, maybe I haven't boosted high enough. Well, 100x is fine. I just didn't want it to dip to 50x. Okay, so I'll pause recording and uh, bring you back in once I've got it in the right position. Okay, I've probably overdone it as usual. It looks a little bit less than 45 degrees there. And, uh, well, it's it's not too far off from... Let's see. No, that's, that's not right. It should be more like this. Oh, uh, there's a slight indication of something. Okay, well that's not doing right at all. Well, part of the problem is we actually need to escape lathe. So, put some constraints. Well, that's not a Holman transfer. The Holman transfer would have us hitting here. Mm, not sure I like that. Perhaps I should actually retro burn a little bit uh, beforehand. Uh, whoa. Tylo periapsis. Um, that's so close. Huh. Now, if uh, if Val didn't even give us any, uh, if it gave us a trivial boost, then maybe we could also get the Tylo encounter as well. But of course, it is going to give us a boost, so I have to figure out how that's going to work out. 
first let's fix our inclination a bit Huh, fixing our inclination seems to have gotten rid of the Tylo encounter. No, it shouldn't have. Very much close to Tylo. I guess we weren't that close. Okay, that's the Tylo encounter. I just want to see if we can get a Val encounter and a Tylo encounter. That's that's what I'm looking for. Or a Val encounter that's so close to the Tylo encounter that it looks like, yeah, okay, like right there. So what I'm going to do is make sure we stand away from Val so it doesn't influence us too much. And that way we can get a high over Val, but not a near to Val. A high over Val, and then hopefully head straight into uh, the Tylo encounter. Alright, so that's the plan. I don't know if it'll work out. Ooh, look at that. Well, here we go, uh, leaving Lath and heading out, but uh, there's a picture for you. Jewel and Lath there. And that might be Val, actually. I don't know if that's Tylo or Val. Any other moons in sight? Nope. Huh, we seem to be missing Val. What's going on here? Or is it just not acknowledging that I'm hitting Val because it's so focused on Tylo? Let's see, um... Say we bring it down a bit. Okay, well there's a Val encounter there. Let's make it as minimal as possible. Like I said, I want to stand off from it a bit. So that we don't miss Tylo. Hopefully. I mean, uh, this is a tight thing, and I don't know if it's going to work out at all. I'm going to get rid of the encounter to see what's actually going on. Ah, there we go. Okay, so how long will we have with Val here? Oh, 13 minutes. Looks like plenty of time. Okay. So I'll... Uh, I don't think we need to do a mid-course correction or anything. We don't want to get we don't want to actually want to get close to Val. So so yeah. All right. See you on the other side of the sphere of influence change. Whoa, okay. Right when I changed sphere of influence, it uh, busted my Val encounter again. So maybe it wasn't quite as close as I might have hoped, which can happen, you know. Okay, well that's not the best way to burn. Let's see now. Um, perhaps a little bit faster. Nope. Perhaps a little bit slower. Aha. Okay. Uh, that's a lot slower though. Okay, well that brings our orbit back in. And it looks like it'll make us miss our Tylo possibility. Though we could boost more and uh, get the Tylo possibility anyway. Hmm. There's also an... I, I don't really want to use the Oberth effect because uh, probably that'll boost us to a much higher orbit. Uh, just by a gravitational slingshot if we try to get close to Val and take advantage of that. So I'll take this situation here.
as minimally as possible. And hopefully that tangency will give us some sort of encounter. But now our this is just going to be 12 minutes. Okay, continuing. Okay, here we are, Vals to Influence. We're actually coming in in front of it here. And I'm going to do our business. So, we're high over Val. Let's do a uh, Mystery Goo Observation. 90 Science. Okay. Uh, that one has something. Nope. Now, we have one Goo Canister and one Science Junior. So let's hold on to those. EVA and EVA report, Bob. 72 science, high over Val. Okay, keep that data. And don't worry, I mean, uh, yeah, we're not uh, milking all the possible data all at the same time from the dual system. But that just means we get to do more missions to the dual system and possibly more interesting missions. So if we didn't get near to Val this time, Perhaps we can send a mission to land on Val and get the data that time. Now, what I want to do is perhaps plot out here for the Tylo encounter. There we go. Now, can we use the Tylo encounter to boost to Paul? You can see I'm not going to get to Bob because that takes an inclination change and I still want to reserve fuel for the trip home. Probably not necessary. I probably would get home just fine. Um, and what we want to do is try and match Bo uh, Paul's uh, inclination as much as possible going into going into Tylo. Oh, that's a little bit well. Tylo doesn't have an atmosphere. Yeah, I guess we could make an approach sixty-four kilometers and see if we can get the near at least the EVA. Okay, let's do this. Takes a long time to escape Tylo. Okay, it's got a lot of gravity. Too bad we hadn't unlocked the gravioli detector. Okay. Oh, we're gonna have a sphere influence change here too. Well, uh, let's let's take a final picture of us around Val. Hello, Val. Goodbye, Val. Okay, now we have to check, and oh, it still retained our tyloperiapsis. Oh no, that's that's for the projected course. I take that back. No wonder uh, it, it wouldn't change the projected course. It would change our actual course because for some reason Sphere Im Influence changes the way the, I guess, patched conics work. Sometimes messes up what the projection is. Okay, I think this is good enough to burn. We're still fairly close to Val. And, oh, there's family picture kind of thing. Should do a crew report sometime, shouldn't I? Okay, hopefully that'll be close enough to count as close to Tylo. And uh, we're probably not going to get a uh, Paul encounter on the first pass. We'll probably have to go around Jewel a few times before we actually get to Paul, but I do intend to get there. Alright, uh, well, let's point. Resolute, resolutely prograde. Not bad. And head in. What am I focused on? I must be focused on lathe still. Uh, let's change that. Let's focus on our craft. 
Ha, huh, look at that tra trajectory around Tylo. We could probably get into orbit around Tylo if we wanted to, but I, I don't particularly... Well, it might be easier to transfer to Paul if we got into orbit with uh, Tylo. Let's see. Ah, 66? Yeah, I mean, that's not too bad, is it? Then we can hang around Tylo and get the Hohmann transfer instead of uh, doing a transfer from this higher orbit. But then this higher orbit, we're already going to be slung into this higher orbit, even without burning 66. And the transfer from this higher orbit to Paul should be less energy intensive. Because this orbit already has more energy than Tylo's orbit. Yeah, I, I don't think I need to get into orbit around Tylo. But what we do need to do is, first of all, let's take a look at Tylo, wherever it happens to be. Oh, there it is. Uh, do our uh, experiments and such. So, is this the one? Yes. One more mystery goo experiment. High over Tylo, 100 points there. EVA. 80 science. Keep that data. And let's go near to Tylo. Let's actually watch our approach. Oh, we're coming around the dark side. No fun. Now, with any self-respecting thing... Well, we're coming pretty close, aren't we? 55. I thought it was 60-something. Okay. Uh, this would be close, right? I would hope. Let's observe the materials bay now. Near Tylo, yes. 250. High radiation environment, samples to glow. Same old, same old. Uh, no atmosphere and uh, no time acceleration thingy so it's EVA alright keep that data board and let's do our crew report from here I guess the surface is covered with various shades of white and gray you think for a second you saw a face down there okay sounds familiar okay sunrise but a very distant sun so it doesn't quite have the same effect okay and we're gonna be slingshot out from uh, Tylo and you can see the effect of a gravitational slingshot we get boosted into a higher orbit like this uh, slightly inclined orbit with respect to Paul and that's not good because Paul Paul does not have the kind of gravity that can take us in very easily so we will have to do a uh, inclination adjustment to get to it if we we want to do that so all right so leaving leaving the rather large world of Tylo now I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit it all in this episode uh, but I'm gonna do it right now I mean in real time I'm going to be bringing Bob back home what I don't know is whether I need to split it up into two episodes or not. I'll find that out during editing.